Hi, it's Coach Michael McTeague back with you again at the Northwest Fencing Center's Fencing on YouTube series. Today we're going to be expanding armory and looking at our own personal equipment. And I've been looking forward to doing this particular video because it's often been a subject of lots and lots of talk around clubs and fencing bulletin boards all over the place. And that is, what makes a good fencing shoe? Not everybody can afford to spend $200 plus dollars on an honest-to-gosh fencing shoe, and there aren't that many of them in the way of choices. You might find that the few fencing shoes that are available don't really fit you well or fit your needs well. So there's a host of other stuff out there. There is a non-unending supply of athletic footwear available to us online and in local stores. So what are we looking for in a fencing shoe? <clears throat> and and what mistakes can we avoid? So, it helps if we start taking a look at some actual fencing shoes. Um, we can take a look at one of the old classic fencing shoes. This is a PBT shoe from Hungary. They actually, I think you can still get this shoe. It has a very flat sole. You can see there's a nice rounded heel to it. There's a heel cup built in hear that there's a heel cup in this that helps spread the load over the heel and the inside you can see this the sole itself is very thin bringing your foot down close to the floor other than that it's fairly minimalist and that makes it light obviously when we're fencing we need to be able to have quick footwork so that's a key thing that we'll find across the board in actual fencing shoes Here's one of the modern uh, Nike Zooms, or Air Zooms. Um, again, rounded heel, fairly level flat sole, um, an appropriate surface on the bottom for, for good traction and good wear on the metal strips. Um, and again, there's almost no insole at all in these shoes. These are almost like fencing socks in a way, or fencing slippers. The sole is very thin and you're in very, very direct contact with the piece, and that can give you a very, very good feel for the piece, or it can give you really, really sore feet um, if you're somebody who needs more support um, in the forefoot. <clears throat> and here is one of the Adidas fencing shoes. Um, I think this is a D'Artagnan, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, they have a slightly more substantial piece to them. They have this inside piece um, that's to protect the inside of the shoe uh, if you drag your foot when you're lunging. Please don't drag your foot when you're lunging. Um, but nevertheless, they have a sole with a stabilization uh, to the from where the push-off for the lunge would be, rounded heel again. The sole is thinner than it looks, just looking at the shoe, you know, from the side. Uh, the sole is actually a little thinner than it looks, but it is more substantial and offers more support than, for instance, the Nike version. Again, this shoe, just like the Nike and the, and the uh, classic sort of PBT, there's a heel cup in here to help spread the load from when the heel hits the ground in the lunge. That's a great deal of force, and your foot needs all the help it can get in that department. <clears throat> Though these are a little bit heavier than the, uh, than, the, uh, than the very minimalist uh, Nike shoe. Um, they are still quite light. Uh, you'll find these lighter than a lot of athletic shoes and for exactly the same reason. So, we're not going to spend 175 to 200 plus dollars on a pair of fencing shoes because Either we can't buy them close enough to, the, to us where we can try them on and make sure that they fit, um, or it's just not in the budget. Um, so, we don't want to make any mistakes. There are some fairly common mistakes we'll see, usually in kids' camps and stuff, where people will show up uh, the first day of kids' camp. Even though you send them an email, they'll show up in a pair of Crocs uh, or something like that. Don't do that. A pair of trail running shoes, light hiking shoes, boots. Those are those are the clear, um, you know, boneheaded. 
don't do it, pretty obvious things. But there are some less obvious things. Some people will like an indoor soccer shoe. But you'll notice this particular one has a very squared off heel. It's got a flat sole, it's fairly thin, there's a good traction surface. But there's not a lot of support or um, from the upper. And you've got a very sharp transition here so that when you hit on a lunge, this is going to kind of flop and slam down. Uh, there is a very soft heel cup, not a hard heel cup like you find uh, in, in a fencing shoe. Um, so this looks like it might be a good choice, but it's not a great choice. If you're going for an indoor soccer shoe, look for one that has a rounded heel, look for one that has a little bit more substantial and upper. You know, it doesn't, this is a very low cut here. Um, this is really um, not so much an indoor soccer shoe as it is an indoor soccer fashion shoe. This is, this is to look like a, fa a soccer shoe, but you're going to wear this with your jeans out and about. This is not something you want to try and fence in. I don't have an example in front of me, but one of the other things you want to avoid is a running shoe. A lot of the modern running and casual athletic wear uh, shoes that are based on running shoes have this new one-piece knit sort of feel to them. Some of them don't even have laces. Um, they're extremely comfortable. I have a pair myself. Love them, but not for fencing. Because your foot on the footbed is going to be, uh, you're certainly your back foot, is going to be pushing really hard against the side of that shoe. And, and that kind of an upper does not keep your foot located laterally in the shoe. You will keep pushing. Your front foot is going to be hitting hard as you retreat, stop your forward action, make direction changes. It's not going to hold your foot going fore and aft either. You're going to keep pressing into it and you're going to stretch forward and you're going to be in front of the sole of the shoe for a brief moment as you're going back and forth. This means your foot is going to be sliding in the shoe. Nine times out of ten that means blisters. Also that kind of upper, if you're fencing epee, you may be subject to the occasional toe touch. I have seen blades go through that kind of construction. Not a great idea. This is a, a knit mesh. This is a knit mesh too. But they're, but they're sturdy and they're strong and nothing's going to go through them. Lastly, a running shoe, if you were to hold a running shoe up so that you were looking straight at it. If you look at a fencing shoe, straight on. You'll notice that it comes pretty down, down straight and rounds in. And a fencing shoe will flare out in the forefoot almost like a wedge where your foot is this wide and the sole is that wide. This is great for stabilizing the forefoot as you're running. But again, as we are moving laterally, we can catch that edge on the strip, that what, what winds up being a fairly sharp edge as that stabilization angle comes out and meets the sole. And we will hit and we can roll an ankle. So running shoes, super light, super comfortable, Super bad idea for fencing. Well, that's a shame because they're fairly inexpensive. You can get a bunch of them for less, but where does that leave us? <clears throat> well, it all actually leaves us with a host of amazing choices. Fencing is a lot like other court sports. Um, I've been doing this for, oh gosh, over 40 years. Um, and it used to be that it was really, really hard to find fencing shoes. But racquetball became popular, and racquetball shoes were awesome fencing shoes. Rounded heel, heel cup, good stability side to side, built for lateral movement. They made wonderful shoes. So where can we look for those kinds of things today, and maybe even find um, some, some real bargains? Well, here's one example. Here is a um, Nike low basketball shoe. I think this is a, a Kobe uh, low. <clears throat> Check it out. There's a heel counter. There's a rounded heel. There's a flat sole with good, good traction. We've got the profile that we're looking at um, that we want. We've got a sturdy upper with good lacing that we're not going to have to worry about being hurt by a toe touch and we're going to be staying located in our shoe. Um, and it's light. And 
you can even go, here's another Nike low basketball shoe. Um, same thing, good sole, nice and light, um, good construction for what we want to do. There's a firm heel cup in here. Um, great choice. Um, this was bought on sale, um, I think it was like 50 or $60. Um, <coughs> so, low basketball shoes, Nikes, Adidas, whatever. Uh, you're looking for light, minimalist low backing by, uh, um, shoes. You're not looking for a chunky mid or, or high top because that's going to be too heavy. That's the other thing about these two. Very light. Um, and if you watch a basketball player playing defense, moving laterally back and forth, it's very much like fencing movement. What else is a lot like fencing movement? Again, I don't have an example right in front of me, but tennis, lightweight, low tennis shoes, another excellent choice. You just have to be looking for one that has some rounding to the heel. The more you lunge as part of your game, the more rounding you want. So those are, that's, that's another option. Basically, you can kind of look for any sort of court shoe. <clears throat> My personal favorite at the moment is this, uh, um, Adidas Stable, this is a um, volleyball shoe. Um, it has a very sturdy, nice covering for it. Um, again, the appropriate kind of sole and profile that we're looking for. There's not as much rounding in the heel, but for me that's going to work because there's a lot of nice um, um, rebound cushioning in there. Uh, the sole is thin, but not too thin, so I'm getting the support that I like to have. Um, this very comfortable sock construction is actually inside this stronger construction. So um, it's still light and very comfortable, but I've got good protection if somebody finds my foot, and unfortunately, occasionally they do. Um, <clears throat> that said, um, and, and these were not as expensive as fencing shoes, um, but not as cheap as some of the other options. Uh, these are, I think, in the $100 range. Um, I didn't mind buying those online because I had seen them in person somewhere else before uh, and I know in the Adidas line what size I wear so I knew what to order. <clears throat> A bargain. These are Lee Ning badminton shoes. Badminton shoes are hugely popular with fencers, particularly with Epe fencers, um, although why just them, I don't know. Um, you can spend as much on a badminton shoe. You can get a top-of-the-line Yonex badminton shoe, and you can spend as much as you would on a fencing shoe. But a lot of people will do that because they're going to get a little bit more support and a little bit more cushioning than they might get in a strictly fencing shoe. Um, this particular set come in like a rainbow of colors and were available online. I think I bought them for about $40, something in that range. Um, hey, look, blue sparkles, but really nice sole. These are a particularly nice shoe if you happen to fence regularly on a wooden floor, whether if your fencing club fences in a gym or, or has ungrounded strips or a lot of the practice strips are ungrounded and, and are finished like a, a basketball or uh, badminton court. Really nice traction from this set. A very nice rounded heel. A very strong heel cup. Badminton players, again, a lot of their footwork is very, very similar to fencing footwork and it's an excellent cross-training sport as well. But here's another option. For all the reasons we've just been listing, these make a great fencing shoe and they were really quite inexpensive. There are things where we could go on and on and on, but basically what we're looking for is a shoe that's light, has a good heel cup, has a court type sole, a nice rounding to the heel, a good sturdy but not too heavy uh, an upper, and um, gives us a good feel for the ground. And looking to sports where the footwork is similar to fencing footwork, badminton, tennis, volleyball, racquetball, um, squash, 
these kinds of things. Now, as you get into some of those more speci specialized sports, you may find that their certain specialized shoes are way more, ex more expensive or as expensive as the fencing shoe option. There are also some uh, inexpensive options that are fencing shoes that are uh, um, uh, done as branded things for some of the fencing suppliers here in the United States, and those are always worth a look as well, um, <clears throat> especially if you happen to be um, at a venue where they're there as vendors or you live near enough to try them on, you can find things that will fit. You really want to, if you can, try on the shoe that you're thinking of buying. Our feet are all different shapes. Shoes are built on all different kinds of lasts. If you have wide feet and you want to buy this shoe, just don't. Um, they're super narrow. They don't work as well. This works better for a wider foot. This works better still. Some of the shoes, like some of the New Balance court shoes, you can buy in widths. So look for the things that's going to fit you the best. Now, last little thing. Bit of a pet peeve for me. Some of my students may be tuning in and they've heard this one before. When you put your fencing shoes on, how do you want them to fit? You want them to be snug. You don't want to have your toe jammed up against the front of the shoe, but you don't want to buy up a half size from your normal size. You don't want to have it too long, too wide. You don't want to be slopping around inside the shoe. It is fairly common, particularly in our leisure athletic wear and stuff, to have little elastic laces so that we don't have to actually untie and tie our shoes. Or some of us may lace our shoes up once in sort of a loose fashion so that we can slide in and out of them and save ourselves the effort of tying our shoes up. And when we're going for a walk in the park, out to dinner, down to school to visit some friends, um, hey, that's cool, do whatever you want. When you're fencing on a fencing strip, you want a shoe that fits snug. Not tight, but snug. You want to lace it up tight. I'm really annoyed when I watch a fencer pop out of their shoe because I know it either doesn't fit or they didn't lace it up. I see lots of fencers not lacing their shoe up and treating them the same way they would a casual fencer or a casual pair of uh, uh, foot, foot gear that they would just wear out to the movies. This is not that. You want the shoe as become as much a piece with your foot become as much one with you as possible. That will make them disappear um, and you'll simply be able to perform your actions and you won't have delays between input to your foot and actual movement because you've slid inside a shoe. If you suddenly have to retreat and your foot slides an inch inside the shoe before you move, that inch is I don't know, what, 25, 30 times more distance than a tip actually has to depress to core a point, you're not going to want to give up that kind of deficit. So whether it's an actual fencing shoe, a court shoe of some type, make sure it fits. Lace it up. Try it on before you buy it if you can. And then go enjoy your fencing. Look around at what your friends are wearing, see what's working for them. But make sure that whatever you're doing, it fits well and you lace it up. And that's it for this segment on personal equipment. We're looking for fencing shoes. Now we know what to look for. You can do a better job of choosing, and you won't show up in something clunky, chunky, and inappropriate. Take care. We'll see you next week with more armory and equipment updates.